Hello everybody, this is Everyday Commentary and this is a video overview of this knife. And as you can tell, this knife is the Spyderco Chaparral and this one has the FRN handles. There have been six versions of this knife. There's this one and then the, the model that preceded it uh, was this one, which is the Chaparral and uh, FRN, or not an FRN, but in Raffir Noble. And before that there was a blued stepped titanium, a ti stepped titanium, the diamond titanium, and then the original Chaparral, which was in um, actual carbon fiber. And so what you're looking at is a, a mid-sized knife. If you want to take a size comparison, you can see uh, it's a little bit smaller than the mini grip. This is the, um, the 5551 Benchmade mini grip, so it's a little smaller than the mini grip. And uh, the big thing on the Chaparral, on all the Chaparrals, is they are exceedingly thin. Like, look how thin that is. I mean, this thing is just, it's super, super thin. And the reality is, this is one of the best cutting knives on the market. This knife just cuts and cuts and cuts, and it's an amazing slicer. So you start out with really thin blade stock, and then it's reduced to almost nothing with this uh, full flat grind. And then the, the blade steel is uh, CTS XHP, so it's a pretty darn good steel. Um, when you combine all that, I just I haven't found anything other than you know the the Percival that cuts like this does. This is one of the best cutters I've ever had. It you know it splits paper like it's butter. It does great in food prep. The CTS XHP is pretty good at being corrosion resistant. Overall, it's a really 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 good knife. Um, the the thing that makes this knife stand out in comparison to the rest of the Chaparral line is the price. This one comes in at about 90 bucks, and that's with new Spyderco map. So you could buy this knife, which is an ergonomic delight with great steel, or you could buy the Delica, which is not quite as good ergonomically and has uh, objectively worse steel. And when I say objectively worse, I mean that it's, it's obviously worse in that it doesn't stay as shiny, it's not as hard, all those kinds of things. But it is also important to note that while very few steel choices make a noticeable difference to a user, the difference between CTS XHP and VG10, in my opinion, is a difference that a user will notice. In particular, I found that uh, VG10 is both hard to sharpen and it's not that great at edge retention compared to something like CTS XHP or um, something like this knife, which runs uh, 20CV, which is even better. Um, I would definitely pay for the, the price difference just to get the better steel, but when you realize that there isn't really a price difference, it's just like, mm, I don't know why I'm carrying this Delica. And, uh, and then you throw on top of it the fact that this has better handle, uh, blade to handle ratio, better blade to weight ratio, weighs less, it's 1.8 ounces, this is the lightest of the, uh, the Chaparral's. This is just the knife to buy. If you're looking for a general all-purpose knife and the Dragonfly is too small, I can't see a reason not to buy this knife. You can see here, as with a lot of Spydercos, if it has a finger choil, it really wants you to use it. I mean, you technically don't have to, but then you're not really getting the full, full grip. Here, this is an easy, super easy, very comfortable four finger grip. And it gets you right up to the blade, gives you a ton of control. There's jimping here and jimping here, but nowhere else. It's very, very nice. A uh, couple things about this knife that I noticed. Um, First of all, it's really surprising. Let's see if I can get him to shine. There you go, right there. You can see it reflecting. But this knife has liners, which is really strange. This is a very thin knife. But it has, uh, there you can see them better. It has sunk, uh, sunken in liners, and those aren't the liners, but you can see them down at the bottom. Which is really surprising because, you know, this knife is pretty small, pretty thin to begin with. But they're inset liners, which is nice. Uh, it gives it a little bit more rigidity. The other thing that's strange about this knife is, man, is this back lock tough. I mean, this is a lot of force to open and close that knife. Whereas if you compare it to something like the Refere Noble version, this thing is just so much smoother. It's, it's noticeably smoother. It's just a... a night and day difference. I mean, the one thing that's going on here is that, you know, there's 
partial inset liners here, but they're full liners here. And while they're skeletonized to make the knife lighter, I imagine that they do a lot to make it more stable and they don't have to really crank down on the spring tension to keep everything square and to prevent blade play. Um, they're both really good knives. I do think that if I had the money, I would get the Raffir Noble version because it is cool looking. But I don't think it's something that I would pay extra for. Eh. I mean, I like this version because I got it for Father's Day. And I do think that the Raffir Noble is a cool material. And, you know, like if money's not an issue, then why not? It's a little smoother. But if you're on a budget, this is definitely the knife that you should probably consider. Um, and I think that this is one of the better pocket knives out there. If you look at it, I think this is the cheapest knife on the market that runs XHP, which is a, a premium steel. Uh, and I think that this is one of the better sized knives out there. I found that this 2.75 inch blade size is really the sort of the sweet spot. It gives you enough to span an apple and slice it up, but it's also not so big that it's gonna scare people away. Um, it's a really good package in the pocket. A couple other things that I would notice, look at that, isn't that weird? See that little return on the wire pocket clip sticks out over the handle. I've never had that be an issue, it slid in and out of the pocket fine, but as you can see here, it's definitely not an issue here. And I just don't get why that's the case. Maybe they, they tensioned the, or they, they creased it too heavily or something, I'm not sure, but it's something that makes me concerned, but it has yet to be a problem. Um, a couple other options if you're looking at knives in this size range. And this is a knife that I think is a really, really excellent buy, and it is the uh, Mass Drop Ferrum Forge Wee Knives Gent. It is just a smidge bigger as well. And then obviously the knife that I showed for the size comparison, which is the Benchmade Mini Grip. These knives are really sort of, in my mind, among the best values on the market. Um, this knife is an amazing flipper, this knife is an amazing cutter, and this knife is just a really great all-around knife. This knife was, you know, for, I think it's like 170 This was a $120 knife, I think it would be a probably undisputed best knife on the market, but when you're talking about money, uh, I don't know what you're getting in terms of price difference from here to here. And they're both fully ambidextrous, you know, the, both both knives are, you know, relatively the right, uh, nice size. I do think I like the blade shape a little better on the mini grip than I do on the chaparral. I mean, the leaf leaf shape, leaf blade shape is fine. And I think that I probably like the wire clip better than the over the top. But they're, both of those things are really, really close. Um, I, I don't know which one I would choose if they were this. Well, I'd probably choose this one if they're the same price because the CTS. XHP is not as nice as the 20 CV, but these are really, really good knives. Um, if you're looking for a knife and this is like your only knife or you like flippers, sorry for that, this is a great knife. This is a really good knife. So all three of these knives are sort of among my favorites that are currently being produced for a reasonable amount of money. And uh, this one just happens to be the cheapest. So um, that's my video overview of the Spyderco Chaparral and FRN. And forward to a full review and a shootout of all three of those knives coming soon.